Well, it's not just preservation. It's actually capturing something that's the best that you can possibly preserve to begin with. So traditionally, audiovisual archives in broadcasting captured what was called the master recording. And that was a higher quality than what was transmitted. Um, transmission always involved reduction in quality, and it's still <clears throat> in digital transmission involves reduction in quality. Somewhere in production, there was master material. So the, the, the real importance is to capture the master material because the master material can be reused um, much uh, and produce better quality reuse than just the transmitted material. If you want to remaster in music, if you want to rebroadcast from standard definition to high definition to ultra high definition, you really need to go back to that master material. Well, the answer is of course it should. Um, the public has paid for it. The public pays in Europe. They pay their license fee. Uh, in, in Canada, they pay their license fee. In the United States, they pay all kinds of charity contributions to public broadcasting. The public feels they own it. And, and so um, it should be available to the public. It should be free to the public. But then the question is free to do what? You can't just do anything with broadcast and audiovisual archive material because there are underlying rights that are legal rights and creators rights especially on music and drama and they have to be respected but I, I would say that the most important material for information for documentation for historical value is factual material news and documentaries and that material has the least problems of rights so the most valuable material uh, for information purposes has the simplest rights issues and is the easiest to clear. And I will add for that reason, um, ENA, the French National Archive has cleared something like 40,000 hours of material for public access. The Dutch Archive has cleared material. ORF has cleared material. BBC has cleared material. The Danish Archive has cleared everything for public access. And I've just heard that the Swiss public broadcaster has not only cleared their material for public access, but also for limited commercial access, free commercial access. So it should be available and it is becoming available. In the beginning, uh, in the 1990s, early 2000, when we were still dealing with open reel material, um, one inch, uh, two inch material, uh, definitely it was the actual putting the, the, the tape on the reel and doing the digitization. That would be something like 60% of the total time. And then maybe 20% for metadata, all the documentation, and maybe 20% for quality control. With cassette material, um, everyone moved to having many cassette players running in parallel, and that cut the digitization time in half. So then digitization is 30%. Um, metadata as a proportion because the whole process is faster. Metadata doesn't get faster if you're doing it manually, so metadata goes up to maybe 30 percent and quality control doubles in its significance and in our experience quality control became 40 percent and it became the bottleneck because we hadn't assigned the same number of people to quality control as we had assigned to digitization. It didn't seem to make sense. Digitization is important. Quality control is a kind of a nuisance. And uh, so it became a bottleneck. We had a backlog. We were in the BBC getting months and months of backlog through the quality control, um, which is why automation, um, clever algorithms, software to do quality control is absolutely essential. Loss of quality is the major problem in archive preservation. It begins at the very beginning that you have to get your hands on the master copy in the first place. Um, and, and I've already mentioned that. It's becoming increasingly difficult. It's so easy to record off air and lose the master copy and even the, lose the notion of the master copy. Second, you have to have proper equipment. You can't just grab any old player and stick a tape in it and hope for the best proper equipment, professionally set up, uh, calibrated, refurbished, and maintained. 
then you need workflow. Um, it's not just a matter that you take a tape and do something to it. There are the metadata steps, the quality control steps, um, things maybe need cleaning and refurbishing. Uh, you have a signal chain, you have material passing through a signal chain, it's going to be coded, it's going to be put in a wrapper. It's all too easy for metadata that might come from your original file to get lost somewhere or scrambled. So you have to really work on the workflow to make sure that what comes out at the back end is just as good as what went in at the front end. And then finally, quality control and, and automated quality control because you're trying to make an efficient workflow because you're trying to save your whole archive, not just um, individual items. Skill is a key issue. Um, the, the usual thinking up until maybe 20 years ago was that you had a skilled operator and the skilled operator just took a piece of material and, and used their decades of experience and they did their very best. The result of that approach, if you apply it to a large archive, to a whole collection, is that you, you lose the collection at the end because you run out of time, you run out of money, you run out of equipment because the equipment breaks down and can't be repaired because it's obsolete. And you even run out of operators because they retire or, or they even die. So the skilled approach of item by item just doesn't work for a whole collection. So in, in, in my view, the most important skill, if you call it a skill, it's, it's really an attitude or a philosophy, is that you are preserving a collection, not preserving an item. And the skill is to develop a, a map of everything that needs to be done, allocate your resources as wisely as possible, and then run the process against whatever budget you can come up with to maximize uh, the total content that can be preserved from the total collection. That's the skill.